okay and uh uh, let me may, maybe I should talk about uh, since we are on boundary conditions. Let me talk about how to treat uh, Newman boundary conditions. Uh, so so Dirichlet boundary conditions, uh, they are just the uh, names. Don't uh, feel uh, like when I started learning this thing, I feel kind of intimidated by names that I don't recognize. But like Dirichlet BC is just uh, saying that u at uh, at the boundary condition is equal to some known value. Okay. And uh, the so-called Newman boundary conditions is just uh, the the derivative, usually the normal derivative. So dot with n at B C is equal to a known value. And there are also the so-called the Robin boundary conditions. It's just a linear combination of these. So so a times u plus uh, b times this at B C is equal to a known value. So, so these are three most common type of boundary conditions you, you encounter. So, so the, the way you treat Newman boundary condition and Robin boundary condition are not much different in, in finite uh, difference because they are for both type of boundary conditions, the value at the boundary is unknown. So you have to do it uh, slightly differently. Okay, so in, in our case, in our case, uh, for example, let's uh, try to set the x equal to zero. So at at x equal to zero, uh, <coughs> du dx is equal to zero. So let's try to set this boundary condition for now. Okay. So what it means is that what what it means, particular for the x derivative, is that I need to discretize the second order derivative in x, but now I, I, I want to discretize this at i equal to 0 and j, right, at the boundary point. But I don't have access to the value before, uh, that is, to, to my left, because there is no i minus 1. So, so what I do is I can approximate it by a times u 0 j plus b times u 1 j, but I don't have u minus 1 j, so what do I do? Uh, I plus c times du dx, which is a boundary condition I know, at 0 j. Okay, so so this, this term, the boundary condition term, is the same no matter if I have a Newman boundary condition that is du dx equal to zero or a Newman boundary condition that is du dx equal to some other known value or if it's a Robin boundary condition du dx plus u is equal to something. I would be plugging the same thing here and then do my Taylor series analysis, right? But here, the Taylor series analysis is easier because I only have to expand this one term u zero j plus uh, du dx times delta x plus uh, delta x squared over two plus etc. and uh, uh, plus c times du dx, right? Okay, so. I want to cancel this term, which means a plus b has to equal to zero. I want to cancel this term, which means b times delta x has to be equal to, uh, sorry, plus c is equal to zero, right? And I want to cancel, I don't want to cancel this term. I want this term to be b times delta x squared over two. I want it to be one. Because this is the this is the derivative I wanted to approximate. So still three numbers, three equations. Uh, this equation here doesn't turn out to be useful actually because we only want to solve for a and b. Because in this particular case, the effect of c is going to be multiplied with something zero, right? So so if you have a non-zero Newman boundary condition, you need to compute c. Here we don't need to compute c. We only need to compute b is equal to two over delta x squared and a is equal to minus of that. So at the boundary, I can approximate this to be what? Uh, to be two times u one j, right? That's b minus 
2 times u 0 j divided by delta x squared. So that's my discretization at the boundary. Does that make sense? Yes. Oh, the second order part is that if you add a d times u of 2 j, to d times u at 2 and j. So you're going to add a d Taylor series expansion u 0 j plus this guy times 2 delta x plus this guy times 2 delta x squared and then you need to also keep this one you need to keep the third order uh, term and uh, here you have a third order term here would be 3 and uh, eight, uh, 4 delta x q uh, etc so then you can you can see i can cancel this term i can cancel this term i can preserve this term to be 1 and i can cancel this term right so that way you can get a more accurate scheme for the boundary 3 factorial 3 factorial times 8 so right so so I, because my here i have 2 delta x cubed at the boundary uh, the modification i have to to do on top of this matrix so first of all i would have wait uh wait why am i here uh so so the first thing i have to do is to include one one more point uh, include one more row into this because i need to solve for u01 etc to u0 n minus 1 right so i need the, the vector i need the, the vector to be longer i need also one more row one more column for the not one more row uh, n minus one more rows and n minus one more columns for the matrix and then the first the one one diagonal block is going to be different so let me let me write this down so starting from the nth row and nth column this matrix is going to be the same as the previous matrix right because this nothing changed and uh, this is still going to be the same one over delta x square so the di so the so the off diagonal blocks never changes but the diagonal blocks are going to change Oh, sorry. This this actually changes. Uh, this also this actually it's it's, it's this that changes. It's uh, so what 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 is changing is that the the coupling between the coupling between u at one j and u at zero j has changed because this diagonal actually didn't change. It's still minus two over delta x squared, right? So what's changed is this. Uh, so the coupling between the second block in in u and uh, the first block in f has changed so this is going to be instead of one over delta x square it'll be two over delta x square and also here so that's a uh, that's the only part that needs to change okay so so if we want to do this in matlab let's uh uh, okay, so how can I revert the boundary condition? Oh, yeah, uh, we didn't have to. We in the boundary condition, we didn't change the matrix, right? So we are, we only changed the the, uh, the right hand side. So let's let's uh, revert the right hand side to be just the ones, uh, which I think in this case I need my right hand side to be n times n minus one because we have one more block, and I have a new let's say is equal to sparse of n times n minus n minus one and uh, and n times n minus one right okay my a new uh from the nth entry is going to be the same as a so i'm just going to set the part of uh, uh, a new to be the same as a and my a new from 1 to n minus 1 and 1 to 1 to n minus 1 is the same as my a diag right okay so the only thing i need to change is a new from uh, n to m to m minus 2 to 1 n minus 1 is going to be 2 times a off diagonal 
and uh, uh, same as same as the symmetric part. So this is going to be my new A. Now let's do the same thing again. Matrix dimension must agree. Uh, should be a oh, should be A new. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, then when I reshape it, uh, the X direction has one more dimension, right? Uh, okay. Let me think of uh, in MATLAB how do you reshape things. So MATLAB is, uh, I think for a matrix in MATLAB, it's the same as how Fortran does it. Uh, yeah. So it goes on the columns, right? And uh, what I have is uh, for each column, I still need n minus one entries. So it's gonna be n minus one and n, right? I, I want to reshape it to, to that. So, so I need the, and so for each column, it goes down for n minus one entries and then the next column, etc. right? So that's, that's the right, right reshaping, all right. And let's surf it. Uh, What? Something is not right. Uh, so what's wrong with that? So this is the boundary that I'm supposed to be making to be Newman. Mm. I think there is something seriously wrong about that. So A off diagonal is gonna be this. I made it twice as large. You only have to change one of the off diagonals. Oh, I only need to change one of the off diagonals. Let me see. So what I need to modify is the equations only on. Yeah, that's right. I only need to modify one. Who said that? Thank you. Yeah, it's one of the upper ones. I only need to modify the upper ones. These are still going to be one. That's right. Because I, I'm not supposed to modify the equation for the second row, right? because these are still the interior, so this is supposed to be one. Thank you so much. Okay, so that means... Um, Do you also need to include the new zero terms that were brought, like before we had that matrix and we left out the u zero terms? Mm -hmm. Do you have to fill those in? Yes, th this is the this is the u zero terms, u zero one, u zero yeah, so n like minus one. In the two diagonal boxes, we only change the diagonal. We also need to include the U, uh, I think it's like, there should be more terms like right close to the middle diagonal. Yeah. So, so here, yeah, so we, we did fill in this term, four, uh, minus four and uh, one over delta x square, and one over delta x square, right? So we, we did fill in this term over, over here, right? So this is filling the, the diagonal part of the matrix over over here right so what i did wrong was this is this was wrong right this should be this should be just the one times a of diagonal right okay so let's try again oh nice that fixed it. So so here we can see that the uh, this boundary is now satisfying a zero Newman boundary condition, right? Uh, it's uh, the derivative with respect to the normal direction is going to be zero.